open condition as you see on the screen. Okay, suppose we want to find out the cross-sectional area A of the gutter that have an equal base and the edge length, each equal to 2. So for example, the base equal to 2 and the edge length is also equal to 2. Now, as you can see, the formula to calculate the area of that gutter is should be based on the trapezoid area. And in this case, it is relatively straightforward because, for example, uh, you can draw, let's say, a vertical line in here. And that vertical distance h, you can calculate easily as uh, 2 times psi of theta. 2 times psi of theta. And then similarly, the distance right there, you can calculate it as uh, 2 times cosine of theta. Once you know those two distance, you can, for example, You can see based on this picture, right? Like called suppose I call this is A, B, C, and D. And let me call this guy is point D, point E. According to your high school a, uh, formula to calculate the area of the trapezoid will be something like the area will be equal to the summation of the two parallel sides, which is A D plus DE, summation of the two parallel sides, multiplied with the perpendicular distance between them, which is H in this case, and then divide by 2. Now, obviously, we know uh, BC, uh, uh, DE, that distance is equal to 2. H you can replace by the formula that I just wrote, which is 2 times sine theta. And then AD, according to that picture, is equal to BC plus twice of CD. That will give you AD. And then you recognize that the distance BC should be equal to 2, based on the picture, same thing as DE. And then the distance CD, you already calculated, it is equal to 2 cosine of theta. So to make the story short, using the area of the trapezoid, you can figure out easily the area of the gutter that you want to maximize is given by that formula right there. Okay? So, now I try to make the board look a little bit cleaner. So I will erase those handwritten mark in here. So let me erase all of my handwriting here first before I discuss the next thing for you. Okay, so now we have the area of the trapezoid given by 4 of psi theta, parenthesis, 1 time cos theta. And making use of the double angle relationship that you learned from high school already, the same area of the trapezoid can be expressed in a different form like that. The reason I prefer to have the last expression is because it will be a lot easier to take the derivative of that function. So now the question is this. Uh, find the angle theta such that it will maximize the area of the gutter. Okay? 
Now, assuming that we say that the angle theta must be between the lower bow equal to zero r radian and the upper bow is pi over 2, which is the same thing like 90 degree. Uh, the reason you can see clearly why the lower bound and the upper bound must be between 0 and 90 degree because that will give you the very big gutter area. If the angle is bigger than 90 degree, let's say theta is this big, in that case then the area of the gutter will not give you the maximum area and that's why we know that the optimum area should corresponding to the angle theta somewhere between 0 to 90 degree or pi over 2. Okay, so suppose you know the so-called initial lower bow and upper bow for the angle theta, which is between 0 and pi over 2. We want to see using the golden section what happened to your answer after two iteration? And in case you write a computer program, based on the theory that I explained in the previous uh, uh, lecture, we keep doing more and more iteration until you see the interval length is within the tolerance of 0 0.05. Okay? So, that is the problem that we want to solve using the golden section. In the next few slides, I will tell you the detail. So let's see what is happening to the next slide. Okay, again, like I told you, the function that you want to maximize is 4 psi theta times 1 plus cos theta. In the first iteration, which is iteration 1, iteration 1, Remember I told you the lower bow is 0 radian and the upper bow is 90 degree or pi over 2. So if you look on the picture on the left, what you have is the lower bow is right here, which is 0 degree or 0 radian. And the upper bow is right there, which is 90 degree or pi over 2. So, corresponding on the point on the curve, you have this value here, function at lower bow, function at upper bow. According to the golden section, we're supposed to insert two points. The first point is x1. And the location of x1, according to the theory that I developed earlier, it is given by this formula right there, which say x1 equal to x lower bow time this number, which is square root of 5 minus 1 over 2. And I believe that number turned out to be something like 0 0.618, I think. Okay? Time x upper bow subtract x lower bow. Now, x upper bow subtract x lower bow, it will give you the initial, the initial interval length. Okay, if you plug in the value, x lower bow equal to zero, uh, x upper bow is equal to pi over two, which is 1.57 radian. Then you see the location of x1 is calculated as 0 0.97 and the corresponding function at 0 0.97 can be computed as 5.1654. In other words, all you have to do is you go back to the formula here and whenever you see theta, you replace by uh, 0 0.9708. 0 0.9708 radian, then you will figure out f theta is equal to 5.1654. So that's the way to calculate the location x1. 
Uh, let me try to erase the board a little bit so that I can explain to you how do we calculate the location x2. Okay, to calculate the location of x2, as you can see, the location x2 is right here, and that is given by a similar formula, which say x2 is equal to x2, which is this location, it is equal to x upper bound, which is right here, subtract this quantity, which is, say, on the screen, say like uh, square root of 5 minus 1 over 2 times xu minus xl. So that is the location of x2. And if you plug all the value, x upper bound equal to 1.5708, x lower bound equal to 0, then immediately you figure out x2 equal to 0 0.6 x2 equal to 0 0.6. And the function evaluated at 0 0.6 is 4.127. So basically, you can see on the screen now, corresponding to the location x1, the function f of 1 right here is 5.1654. 5.1654. Corresponding to x2 location here, the function value for f of 2 is 4.1227. Using the same idea like I discussed with you in the theory of golden section, we argue like this. From the lower bound right here to this function f2, the value go up from the value f2 to the value f1 the function is also go up higher bigger so the parent is the same however from f1 to the upper bound the function go down the parent change so because of that we say immediately this should be the new lower bound which is the same thing as the old upper bound and two point before that, which is this guy right here, should be the new lower bound. So in other words, the new interval for the next iteration should be from here to there. And that new interval, you can see, is smaller than the original interval. Okay? Alright. So, based on that, we have some idea of what is going on in the next iteration. Okay, let me again erase those things on the board first. So let's move on to the next slide.